Fortitude, um, we can talk about him. He has made such a long journey to get here. Um, it's the first uh, uh, event here that we've had, the Chinese players making their way across, which is super exciting to see. Obviously, uh, we, might, we might have all hoped for um, Fortitude and Happy potentially as like a grand final, as the most epic uh, matchup potentially. But we're so glad that he could make it anyway. So who do you ex expect to come out through this match? Uh, I would say, of course, Fortitude is the human hope. He's like the main human between, uh, of course, Mr. Starbuck and Mr. Sog. But he's playing happy almost daily in these Chinese show matches. So definitely he has the best practice possible. But is he able to deliver versus Mr. Labyrinth, who, of course, he's still a professional, very, very strong, motivated under. So I'm really, really excited to see how they perform on LAN. Yeah, you couldn't have summarized it better. Uh, Labyrinth, you know, he's a player that's not known for playing, uh, for playing Crypt Lord like Happy does these days. What first hero are we expecting out of Labyrinth today? Yeah, that's a great point because when you are practicing versus Happy, you are practicing versus very, very best. But yep. Happy, if he's like convinced that something is optimal, that something is very efficient, he will go for it. On Concert Hill, Cripplot. On every other single map, Cripplot. That's what yep. Happy thinks it's optimal. Maybe in one month, Happy will decide, no, maybe it's Leech, but for now it's Cripplot, Cripplot. With Labyrinth, it's totally different because we can open with even Dreadlock, with Leech. So I'm actually excited to see which hero will, will he open because we just don't know. Of course, map can give us some indicators, like on some maps, maybe Cripplot is better, but we'll see. He's the mystery undead. He absolutely is. You know, Labyrinth is not known for playing as conventionally as the other undeads. Um, and, you know, perhaps at times he's not the most solid. He's not known for going um, on huge streaks and beating all of the fellow professional players that there are, like a Happy or even 1-2-0 in the past. I would love to see some Dreadlord action. It's been a long time since we've seen Dreadlord being played on the main stage. You know, it's a definitely an unconventional and fairly unpopular pick, but it always provides some entertaining games. Labyrinth, you know, he's known for Lich first quite a lot and pretty much never playing DK or Crypt Lord. Um, whereas Forty, on the other hand, you know, he's known for playing super standards. He is very by the book. He's playing a lot of Archmage first in particular. Um, what are the chances that we might see an MK first, do you think? <laughs> I think like Fortitude came with this boss mindset. I'm going to <laughs> deliver only most efficient strategies. So I'm just expecting Archmage. And I think that at this level, I think he's not going for the like Hail Mary strategies that are going to yeah. surprise your opponent, I think that he's going to try to deliver clean play. With yeah, I completely agree with you. And now the game is finally ready, guys. Fortitude versus Labyrinth, game number one. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and here we go, citizens of Rarland. This is day number two. We are in full swing today. And in the yellow trunks representing China, it's Fortitude. <laughs> And he's wearing the yellow t-shirt. Is it a coincidence? Yes. <laughs> that was well thought out, wasn't it? And Labyrinth in the top left here representing South Korea. Make some noise for Labby! <laughs> Isn't it so nice just to have the crowd behind us right now, Saul? It's definitely exciting and players, you know, it's a little bit different for them to play in the comfort of their home and versus this this round. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, my uh, caster MMR is quite low because it's not <laughs> Archmage, it's MK. I actually can't believe we're seeing an MK first on the very first map. That is very exciting indeed. You know, Shallow Grave, it's one of those maps where MK can work because humans got the access to the mercenary camp, right? I feel like Mountain King without that merc camp feels really underwhelming. But on maps like uh, Shallow Grave or even Last Refuge, he can actually be put to quite good use. So do you think that Mercam will be used to uh, acquire, acquire the piercing damage you need to kill the expansion of Undead easily? So the Berserkers are pretty strong and they're really good at fighting ghouls. And of course, they do full damage against buildings that are being constructed. So that is definitely a good point. However, it is quite hard to keep it alive against the Lich. Of course, the Lich always aims to uh, catch units with Frost Nova, buying boots later on just to chase those units down. So it can be tough, but the MK is just as equally powerful at taking down those units. And Labyrinth, he's going for his own mercenary camp as well. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's an exciting part because it's the first test for the players to see if they're feeling confident in their setups if Mr. Fortitude or Mr. Uh, Mr. Labyrinth are going to lose a, a unit during the creep. It means that something may be wrong with their setup, but for now, clean creeping for both players. 
Yeah, Fortitude handling that camp very well indeed. Not the easiest to creep with MK first, as we know. And the Lich here also creeping up really nicely as well. I see that Labyrinth did actually forgo the Ritual Dagger for now, perhaps just relying on cycling in those low HP ghouls with new ones. That's true, and also expansion position is like in mm, on the opposite side, so he may grab the Ritual Dagger, you know, on the way back, because uh, the base uh, is set up in a... Um, quite quite a comfortable position but we'll yep. see maybe he'll buy it now is sacrificial school yeah and still no ritual dagger actually so maybe oh actually a second rod of necromancy ahead of okay. time so labyrinth doesn't plan on coming back to base anytime soon if i had to make an educated guess in the meantime fortitude here will be taking the second camp getting a decent item as well opting for bash of course second will synergize nicely with those claws and big heal pod is also a really sick item yeah, for the this MK. mk can just go in front click on this leech and try to deny the the, the um, the damage potential because Leech is like a glass cannon hero. Yep. Leech would like to attack, attack, and doesn't move at all. But MK, maybe that's the idea. Put boots on MK and just pressure the Leech. Yeah, I think Fortitude might be thinking that exactly. We see both players here are going to be securing their own level 3s. The Lich, of course, got the big mana potion, which is an insane item for him. And we're going to see here just in a second what the Sasquatch will indeed drop for him. It's Claws plus 8. Ooh, Incredibly ladies. good Perfect. item. Insane item for the Lich. And Pendant of Energy as well for the MK. That's absolutely ridiculous. Both players here basically finding the best possible drops. So this is going to be one heck of an explosive contest. Now is the important moment with their decision. Are they going to fight in the middle of the map? Are they going to focus mostly on cancelling expansions? This is the exciting moment of this matchup in the early game. Well, how this trade will look like? Are they going to lame each other or just fight? Yeah, I think both players were potentially gearing up for a skirmish right now. We've got the Berserkers on both sides as well, which just dive super easily to each hero's respective spells. Of course, the ball is insane at keeping that unit locked down. And Lich level 3, of course, with Nova level 2 is incredibly potent as well. MK here just looking to sort of establish dominance here a little bit, fighting over this very last creep, the level 2 brigand here. Not offering too much XP, of course, but is, it's always worth fighting over every bit you can. Um, amazing part for me is to see how the players are managing their mana. Because as you can see, they're just not spamming skills. They waited for long, so long for this perfect connection and one bolt. Berserker there we go. The Berserker is taken down immediately by the Storm Ball, but of course those footmen, they are being eaten alive right now by that level 2 Nova, which is absolutely deadly. We see another Nova coming out, and the Berserker may potentially be in some danger as well. MK with the return shot as well onto the Shadow Priest. Getting a couple kills. The Goo also gets killed, but there's a bit of a weird surround for a second there almost. Oh, big Mana Potion committed as well to get the Berserker killed. That's a lot of experience going towards the Lich. What do you think about this defensive bolt? It was probably just to save the, 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 the Merc. Because uh, it was like just bolt on the leech and basically nothing happened. But may maybe the idea was to save the troll, ber uh, troll uh, forest priest. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The bolt was thrown maybe just a little bit too too late there to save the berserker from before, which would have been really nice, of course, to keep that one alive. And we see the tech differences being established here. Labyrinth already began his tier two, and. Fortitude, you know, he had to commit a lot of militia early on. It's a little bit more difficult to creep with the Mountain King. Also getting an early shot. So Forty is beginning his tech now. So there will be a little bit of a difference, but it shouldn't be too, too impactful. And, and also, so far, the uh, amount of expansions that has been cancelled, it's zero. So the, they are going to, to mid-game with a very, very strong economy. So we can expect some uh, huge unit production soon. Yeah, this is a really interesting dynamic, actually, between the Mountain King and the Lich. It feels like the immovable object meets the unstoppable force. You know, they're both meeting, and neither force can get past the other, and both the players' expansions remain uh, completely uncontested, of course. We see Fortitude here with 20 peasants to his name. Crazy amount, obviously, but that's the amount of lumber you need to get this humor. The humor? <laughs> the human economy rolling, of course. Yeah, but also look, the beautiful Sim City by Mr. Labyrinth. Like, this MK would like to connect with some acolytes, with Bold, of course, but... There are a lot of obstacles on the way. Yes, indeed. The, necro, the, ne the Necropolis in front, of course, providing a bit of a buffer. We've got a second crypt here as well. Labyrinth loves to build all those proxy buildings and the expansion, of course, which is a great idea. MK committing some mana here, but nicely, beautifully denied by Labyrinth there, making sure to not give any more XP over to that MK. It's Nova connects with four units, and Mr. Fortitude says, I don't want to take this trade. I'm in the undead territory, and he'll just pull him back. Yeah, the Mountain King kind of struggling to get anything more done. Most likely, Fortitude will back off and do a little bit of creeping, but there's a chance that Labyrinth comes cross-map now, and he looks really strong with those items, and of course, that level 2 Dark Ritual is incredibly strong. And as we, uh, as we know, the fragile part of human race design is that are the peasants. 
So you may mine happily with like five of them, but Nova will land, some ghouls will connect. But for now, Mr. Labyrinth is creeping. He doesn't even want to go to the opponent base. Yeah, I find that an interesting choice, honestly. Labyrinth, you know, he didn't get a lot of experience from that camp overall. A decent item, of course, in Replenishment Potion, but only for later on, basically. Uh, Fortitude is making his way across right now. We do see another deny going onto one of those ghouls. Very nicely done. The Forti uh, Labyrinth is bleeding a couple units here, but Fortitude coming in with so many mercenaries. We've got the Priest, we've got the Berserker, and the Mauler as well. Yes, his front line looks very tanky, but as we can see, Mr. Labyrinth is just jumping on these fragile uh, Mercs, uh, Berserkers. Oh my god, beautiful double kill there with the Nova, denying the Fiend as well, once again preventing more experience going towards the Mountain King, but the Mountain King isn't done yet, he wants to get that out of the Fiend. The Ogre Mauler there goes smash! <laughs> nice deny as well by Labyrinth again, he is keeping on top of these denies, it's insane! He's insane, but I feel a little bit like versus Keeper in Mr. Labyrinth's position, like I, 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 he took his Fiend and the Fiend got just bolted and killed, maybe, maybe save your Fiend in your base, I don't know. Uh, MK can be as strong as Keeper with Entangle, as we can see. Yeah, especially when backed up by the Mauler, of course, that normal damage there just helping to secure the kill. I think I, I completely agree, it would have been nice for Labyrinth to maybe keep the Fiend safe, as they are extremely weak against the high-level Mountain King out in the open field. Especially when MK is close, you know, pro players are scouting really well, so, you know, to feel this moment. And ladies and gentlemen, exciting structures are coming in the Undead base. Is it going to be Necromancers? Necromancers would be absolutely sick, dude. Obviously, everyone would expect Banshees, but Necros, that would be so cool. We're going to see in a few moments there, guys. In the meantime, Fortitude, he's getting prepared with a lot of production buildings. We've got double workshop, we've got a Sanctum, and another barracks coming. So Forty is going to be able to get to high supply really quickly, but is most likely going to have to bank on 50 for quite some time. Yes, and the fight is coming to the middle. Are they going to challenge each other for the lab? As we can see, the golem has been pulled. So Mr. Labyrinth is trying to, to creep the, the lab, but now he sees that Fortitude is in position, so they have to fight. And uh, uh, Blood Mage comes to the party to fool this MK with mana. Here, a focus onto the Blood Mage, which is definitely the right target. Blood Mage nicely microed away. Once again, another deny on those fiends, but even though the experience is being denied, the MK is getting a lot done. He's getting a lot of kills here. And of course, Undead needs to build up that mass of fiends as quickly as possible. The level one coil here, not doing too much to keep these units alive. And you need those fiends in the late game versus gyros and overall for damage. And if your opponent is very good at picking them just for cost of the mana, it's very good, efficient trade. And basically, Mr. Fortitude is buying him some time for basically a stronger late game. Labyrinth there trying to borrow one of his fiends. Of course, that one's still going down, unfortunately. The timing just a little bit off. And as we see, it is indeed actually Banshee. So no necros for us today, yes, guys. Yes, so Mr. Labyrinth is investing into the future. Basically, the idea for the Banshees is, of course, to help versus MK Bolt. But also yep. to steal potential knights. But you may say there is no knight so far. But yes, that's why this Banshee pack is so early. But it, it can pay off in the late game. Yeah, I actually love this early Banshee tech. It really helps just to get the upgrades online as quickly as possible, because you need to get a lot done. You need the Adept, you need the Master, you need like five or six, maybe even more Banshees sometimes, just to have enough to, you know, shield your entire army and maybe steal some leftover Knights. Fortitude here, he's getting some upgrades prepared of his own. We see both the Knight upgrades being prepared already, yes, and War Trading and Sundering Blaze ready to go for those Knights. Uh, thank you for the sub, by the way. Thanks for supporting <laughs> the stream. And uh, yes, I wanted to point out that Blood Mage did not uh, transfer mana for the creep. Unacceptable behavior for the Power Rifle players. But of course, Mr. Fortitude wanted to creep fast and he took the item immediately. Yeah, the Blood Mage here actually quite low on mana and so is the MK. So as you say, the Blood Mage really being used just to speed up creeping as much as possible as opposed to stealing mana. We'll see if that becomes an issue later on. Only one mana potion available to Fortitude. He doesn't have the most amount to work with. And Labyrinth, he's pretty much full mana actually. We see the Lich is just able to recover mana super easily from those Dark, uh, dark Minions from the Dark Ranger. And uh, as we can see, Mr. Fortitude decided to go for Knights. Usually when he plays versus Happy, Happy is going for Cripplord. And what Cripplord power is in the late game? Powerful Impels, level yep. 5 Impels. So if Human is going for Knights, they are basically uh, destroying them. But now there is no Cripplord on level 5. So probably that's why Mr. Fortitude decided to skip Gryphons and he's going for the ground army. You're absolutely right. The level 3 Impale is insane against Knights, but also level 3 Frost Nova is not to be underestimated. That slow lasts forever on those Knights, and they can be quickly rendered useless as well. 
easy targets for possession perhaps at times as well. Positioning is going to be key going forward. Labyrinth making a bit of a play here actually, picking up a few units and that's the level 5 Lich unlocked and that is going to be some deadly Novas. But supply is even ladies and gentlemen, usually at this stage of the game you can see some uh, uh, food advantage for the undead, so the push is quite deadly but I think the, in this game Mr. Fortitude is looking great in the food uh, department, maybe because it's of, uh, of the night tech, or because you wait a little bit longer for the rifles. But as we can see, there is not much siege potential in Undead Army, so basically Mr. Fortitude can just creep and he can come back without taking too much damage to his economy. Yeah, the buildings of human quite resilient, of course, against all the piercing damage of the fiends. We see Labyrinth here bringing across some extra ghouls. They're going to be a nice buffer against those knights, of course, and may help indeed prolonging the siege here. Fortitude throwing out a bolt, getting some mana stolen right away, but his mana is quite low on that MK. We'll see if he will be able to make great use of that here or not, but the MK is being focused straight away, forced into Nimble Potion early. Paladin also looking a little bit damaged. Knights being targeted straight away. This next Nova will hit huge, but nice bolt and drain just to keep that Lich under control. Militia is coming as well, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the biggest fights, or, no, or not the biggest fight in this game. And as we can see, Undead has to kite back. And the healing wards, amazing item on a little bit lower level, but on pro level, they just die instantly. This is an absolutely mental fight right now. We see the Paladin being focused. He can't divine shield. The silence was too strong in this case. Beautifully timed by Labyrinth. Huge Nova onto the Peasants as well. It feels like Labyrinth is cleaning house, but the supply would suggest otherwise. It looks pretty even for both players. MK and Knights are getting so many return kills on these fiends. And Blood Mage is still with full mana, so MK will, will can oh, throw many balls, again. but especially who is the Glass Cannon now? The MK is in trouble oh. and TP just in the last moment. MK saving himself back to the base, of course. With the Paladin dead, there is no immediate healing for Fortitude right now, which obviously sucks for him, it has to be said. Heroes uh, looking pretty healthy on mana, though. The MK there, just completely full mana, but not able to make full use of it in that engagement, forced into the TP, unfortunately. And now Mr. Labyrinth is getting value from the healing wards, because as we saw in the fight, of course, it's not worth it to cast the, the item, the healing wards in the the fight versus their opponent by dying so quickly but during creeping uh, creeps are not pro players they don't know to target healing wards so yep. he can heal his army and creep very efficiently but paladin is back and he was rebooted from the tavern it highlights how important paladin is for this army yeah, it's really tricky though as human, when you have to tap and revive without an Archmage, you don't have the most amount of mana recovery in the world. We see the Blood Mage not really able to transfer anything over there. Nice movement by Fortitude. He's going to catch two units here as well. Labyrinth a little bit sloppy perhaps in his uh, unit rally right there. But the anti-magic shell is online and Mr. Labyrinth sees that this is his time to push basically. Uh, there is not that man, much mana on the Paladin as you said and the big fight is happening again. Here we go, guys. Another engagement once again between Labyrinth and Fortitude. Blood Mage being targeted, of course, the MK as well. It feels like Fortitude has to micro all his heroes to the back as much as possible. We see the Knights are connecting quite well with the Fiends. Banish is nice. Oh, the Blood Mage! Fortitude did not see that coming. The, no, the Coil Nova just absolutely executing that hero. Is the MK next on the menu here? No, he manages to TP out once again. Knights getting a few more counter kills. But we supply still favors the human. The trades with Knights were amazing. And uh, as we can see how Mr. Fortitude's strong micro is. Basically, he was trying to save his heroes. But in the meantime, his Knights were dealing so much normal damage to those fiends. And we can see the effect in the supply. Yeah, we can see that Labyrinth is really focusing heroes as much as possible. And the Knights, as you say, in the meantime, they're just connecting with the Fiends and getting a lot of return kills. Uh, the MK also with Bolt, getting rid of those Banshees as often as possible well, as, as well is absolutely crucial. Another important moment. I think that Mr. Labyrinth will be able to get the item. And I think he will pull back because like, there is no point to fight versus, uh, versus human now. But can Mr. Fortitude punish him for this greedy thing? And instant TP was casted. Yeah, nice TP there. Is Fortitude going to get the Fiend? Yes, he does. And also a Banshee died to the Creeps. It feels like Labyrinth here, he's not getting enough Banshees out onto the field. Maybe he should have gone double temple sooner. Uh, hard to judge, but as we can see, like, I think Fortitude is just having fun. He is so used to not being able to produce those Knights in games versus Happy because of this Creep Lord. And as we can see, versus Leech, and I trust your opinion that Nova is strong on Knights, but in pay, is stronger. pay level 5, <laughs> that's also a killer. Absolutely true. So Labyrinth, what is his transition right now? We've got more fiends coming, of course. We're going to have some blockers in the form of abominations. Not the most powerful unit in the world, but Disease Cloud can do such work in long games. 
Perhaps Labyrinth could have tried to slot one, in, slot one in earlier and get that disease cloud rolling a little bit sooner. Those knights would be getting heavily punished right now. Also, what is interesting for me, as we can see, there is a lot of anti-magic shell on, on units, but there is no Gryphon, so the anti-magic shell is only good versus both. And there is no that many possession attempts by Mr. Uh, Larger event. Also, I think this is a mistake, actually. He's not getting too much value from yep. his Banshee mana, that's my point. No, I think you're absolutely right. That's a very interesting point because at the end of the day, as you say, there's just Stormbolt to worry about, sometimes Holy Light as well. Of course, that Banish Bolt Holy Light combination can be absolutely ludicrous, but I feel like Labyrinth just needs to protect his heroes. Maybe a couple AMS on the Banshees, and, and then uh, the Banshees are ready. Yes. Oh, the Mortars here, what are they doing? The Mortars are out of position! <laughs> Oh, oh, one being sniped right off the bat. That is unfortunate for Fortitude. He needs to pay attention to those for sure. They are absolutely crucial in yeah. countering those Banshees. Yes, but as we can see, I think Mr. Labyrinth uh, he's decided now to uh, invest his mana into possessions because, as you saw, <laughs> actually not, he's casting the anti-magic shell. But the, the main value you can get is to cast the anti-magic shell on your heroes. Absolutely true. We see a couple Banshees there, uh, slightly under the threshold, actually, to be able to cast possession, roughly so. Labyrinth, he needs a little bit more time just to build up a full mana pool on all of his Banshees, cast AMS twice, and when you do that, you still have enough leftover mana for possession, and perhaps Labyrinth can use that to take an yeah, amazing we, engagement. As we can see, ladies and gentlemen, the game is so close that there is nothing left to creep. We are entering into this StarCraft 2 mode, basically. <laughs> there is just left to expand and pump units, but of course, it's still Warcraft. We have amazing heroes with strong levels and strong inventory. We see Fortitude here getting rid of some peasants. They've done their job. Splat! And there they go, making more room for mortars and potentially more knights as well. Labyrinth here, of course, as you said, there's no more neutral objectives on the map. We're going to see an engagement here, but the Banshees just run into the MK. What is Labyrinth doing right now? He's diving for the back line. There's some possessions trying to be connected. Stop the mortars, of course, being targeted as well. And yes, but no, no value for the Oh, the Nova! The mortars are being absolutely decimated at the back here. We see the clap on the MK as well. Really nice indeed for the, the Banshees to the left here. They're being absolutely destroyed right now by the mortars. One more shot. Two more being taken out to the side there. This is an absolutely chaotic fight right now. Knights trying to make their connections to the Fiends as well. Of course, the Abomination here doing what he does best and just hanging around and spreading the love. There is still a lot of mana on both uh, heroes uh, for both players. That Every moment can be, can be crucial, and as we can see, ladies and gentlemen, supply is even as well. So this is such a close game, and oh, MK got level a few more six. Kills and coming gentlemen. out though. Boy, the abomination gets consumed by Dark Ritual. That's pretty much full man on the lich here. Mass commitment here by Labyrinth. He's got the level three Nova ready. Ban uh, Blood Mage being chased right now, but he does have a heal potion. Of course, the Paladin level three here absolutely crucial for keeping those heroes alive. Lich, Lich is in some serious trouble right now. Does have the Ember potion. Coil last second keeps him alive. Counter focus on the MK. Avatar is being used right now. That's this the MK is invincible right now. Who has the better ultimate now? Archmage with Mastelli on uh, MK. I think we can agree that MK uh, ultimate looks amazing and feels amazing. The, I don't the Dark Ranger to the top just got picked off and Labyrinth has to give up game number one. Well, I don't know about you, Saul, but I don't think we could have started off on a better note right there. What an amazing first map. Definitely to see MK level 6, and I was so excited at this ultimate that I didn't even follow what was happening on the screen, but you're <laughs> absolutely right that Mr. Fortitude was trading very, very efficiently, and I need to give shout-out to both players, basically, uh, you know, to avoid this huge nuke from both sides, to be aware where to put your invul, where, what to heal, how to position. Very amazing, very close games. Interesting, I would say, a less common strategy choice by them is a perfect start to this series. Yeah, I'm not sure any of us really could have predicted Mountain King Lich as the first map, and we see just how fun that matchup can be. There was so much killing on both sides, it was totally chaotic. I think Labyrinth there just sort of messed up, he moved into Fortitude's army and just lost so many Banshees right off the bat, and then tried to dive for those Mortars, which did work out, but all the Banshees were killed in the process, and when that happens, there's no way to steal those Knights away. Yes, and as you highlight, like both army had like very uh, important but vulnerable units, yes. and they were trying to both uh, jump on them while uh, uh, trading mana. So like amazing, amazing performance by both players, and I'm excited to see next game. Yeah, honestly, I thought that um, Labyrinth was going to claw that game. Uh, back on um, after that middle game and we saw the Banshee transition which I think is absolutely right but it felt like for one of the major engagements near the the late game 
there just wasn't enough Banshees, there wasn't enough AMS, there wasn't enough maybe even Curse potentially, there was no Spellbreakers exactly. to deal with. Perhaps Curse would have also been great to just leave that enabled. There was a Sanctum available, there was no Breakers. Yeah, exactly, that's a great point and what is more important, there was no Archmage. So if you want to trade mana, if you want to force Dispel from your opponent, uh, forcing Dispel is more efficient if your opponent doesn't have this mana, mana region. I also feel there was a an opportunity, perhaps a window, to morph all of the statues and just go all in with destroyers. There really wasn't a lot of gyrocopters this game, and it felt like Fortitude got very comfortable with his army composition and was just able to go for the perfect anti-ground army. And perhaps Labyrinth neglected the, the opportunity just to morph all the destroyers and just destroy those knights. That's a great point. One of like popular advice that you can give to human player in the late game versus under is to not over make your knights because they can be countered easily both by destroyers and banshees are you highlighted. But in this game we saw so many knights and Mr. Labyrinth didn't punish the strong enough. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate there for Labyrinth in the end. It felt like he did have the cards in his hand for a time there in Fortitude. He just hung in there and got the perfect anti-ground composition rolling. Game two, I'm really, really interested to see how the players will adapt. Will it be MK again? That would be insane. Well, as we can see, uh, they are microing very, very well, and they are be definitely ready. They are trying their, their best, and they are not afraid. I, 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 I thought that we see just standard, 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 but there is no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, the second map is going to happen right now. Welcome. Fortitude versus Labyrinth, game two. Let's go. Here we are, folks, at the BE Esports World Series. We have Labyrinth versus Fortitude, game number two in this winner bracket quarterfinal. And it is going to be a Crypt Lord. Maybe Mr. Labyrinth said, OK, Happy is not here, but he has some nice idea how to approach this matchup. And Mr. Labyrinth is trying to go for more, like, more, more mainstream idea. And also, there is no Merkam on this map. So it's also a factor. Absolutely. I do think the Archmage generally is the most consistent hero. And on maps like Mercenary, it feels like he is the proper choice. Labyrinth playing Crypt Lord, I feel like I almost never see him choose this hero in this matchup. He is known for being a Lich first player, of course. And Fortitude, will he respond well to that? He has had a ton of practice against Happy's Crypt Lord, so he should know what to do. Definitely. And I'm excited to see if it's going to be immediate uh, refraction of the hero choice for the late game, because maybe we'll see Gryphons in this game. Griffins would be fun to see indeed, of course, being really strong against Crypt Lord late game, of course, nullifying one of his greatest strengths, the Impale. But of course, sometimes you can opt to go for those level 3 Beetles instead, and there's just so much stuff in the way when those Griffins get webbed, and they can be quite a potent as well. But of course, Crypt Lord not ideal against Griffins for sure. So Labyrinth here going for the instant expansion as we're used to seeing him do on these kinds of maps. This time not forgoing the Ritual Dagger as well early on, so he is fully equipped. And Fortitude, he's going for most likely a level 3 creep right here. We see him taking the first big Tusker account, getting the Wand of Man stealing, a decent item, um, but not incredible, of course. Nice little scout early on by Labyrinth as well, just to confirm, is the Archmage going to be super aggressive early on with level 2, or is he going to come later with level 3 and try to put some really heavy pressure on? Yes, what's Happy is usually doing, he's like splitting his army with uh, Beetles going to harass and Goose and Skeletons helping to creep Crippler to level 3, but this is not Happy. This Mr. Labyrinth, as, as we can see, he's just crossing the map. Yeah, Labyrinth being super aggressive here. I think anticipating what is the more common creep route of humans deciding to creep their expansion early and then be aggressive themselves. And Fortitude, he's going to have a bit of a difficulty, like a difficult time here trying to get his own expansion up, perhaps looking to be aggressive first Players and then expand behind. And what excites me about Crippler is always this potential for impale surround. Yeah, there's always the threat, the looming threat of that Crypt Lord impaling your heroes and getting them surrounded. There are so many units in the way. Oh, Staff of Teleportation coming in right now from the Archmage. Really nice heads up play by Fortitude. The Nerubian Tower is not prepared yet. We see the footman flooding in. Here comes the Impale Surround, as you predicted so, but the Surround doesn't land. It doesn't stick, and the expansion gets cancelled right away. But bear in mind, Fortitude hasn't begun his own cre his expansion yet. It is actually a tech to tier 2. Oh my god, it's going to be human with one base, and I'm so excited. Usually it means a uh, rifle caster, but look at this amazing uh, harass to the wood economy. And if you go one base, you cannot lose those uh, peasants because you can't remake them. This is actually so five head by Labyrinth right now. To send those skeletons into the main base, knowing that Fortitude would have potentially damaged workers from that 
uh, big creep early on and getting a little bit of value with that, of course. And also the from scales. the camp that he crept remotely, this is like very, very strong uh, read because sometimes, you know, we see players like stealing the item that's left on the ground from this remote creeping, but just harassing, punishing this low HP uh, peasant is also genius. Beautiful moves here by Labyrinth, of course. So Fortitude playing one base. This is so interesting to see. We've seen such a different map one, and map two as well is going to play out completely differently. And one base usually means Rifle Caster, push of tier two, especially versus expansion that is uh, going up for for uh, Labyrinth. But the question remains, Archmage is on level three. One Water Elemental in the right spot can cancel this expansion still. Can somehow Mr. Players Fortitude can do it. Attack. Well, the expansion here is only about 50% finished, still very vulnerable to being cancelled. We see Fortitude coming in again. He does have more mana for another elemental. This might be two elementals here and another easy cancel. We'll see if Labyrinth can play around this, but actually he gets the surrender of the Archmage. But Fortitude is prepared with the Staff of Teleportation, but another Impale is ready to keep the Archmage locked in place. But what are elementals that are close to the expansion? He's moving them to be far away from the TP and oh, this beautiful. expansion may be dead. It's a game-deciding moment. Absolutely, game deciding moment indeed. The other elemental, its timer is not low. This is the freshly summoned one, and the expansion I think is going down, so it's gonna go down. This is a huge oh moment for Labyrinth. And the expansion for him does go down. This is so huge. And uh, I think that Undead is not taking yet. It's going to be like not full tech advantage. There will be more, and the rifle caster push is coming. We need to stop it somehow, and you don't have the gold income to help with it. I was going to say, let's make a prediction as to what the second hero will be. I really wanted to see a Fire Lord and just go all in. But Fortitude is going to play it a little bit safer, play the long game, and I, get his I agree with going. you that like, a second hero is uh, like, uh, a nice idea to think about your game situation. As we can see, Mr. Fortitude is ahead. And actually, he says, as, as you mentioned, like, there is no point to make like full all in, even there is a good chance that he's going to finish the game. Yeah. He wants to stabilize, but this push will be strong. But when you are doing rifle caster push, you need to wait a little bit, right? To have those like two priests, some uh, some rifles to deal damage. So it's now, I think, time for creeping. Yeah, I suppose also to note is that Fortitude doesn't have a lot of footmen left over. So with that Fire Lord, perhaps it wouldn't have worked out so well. Fortitude here continuing his creeping game, of course. This camp here at the lab gives so much experience. You've got two level five creeps and a level six tracker, of course. I wonder Labyrinth here, he's taking the middle right now, actually cleaning up that mer the marketplace. We'll see what item he gets afterwards. Fortitude here, we see the Mountain King rolling in as well. Will he give the soul experience over? I think no, the Archmage is just going to try and help accelerate the creeping as much as possible. An Archmage with pretty good items. That's true, and as we can see when you play Rifle Caster, there is no need to add Zeppelin because in two base, two base scenario, the start of the day is perfect to start blaming with Zeppelin, but it's going to be one base push, and the multitude is preparing for it. More units are coming. We are still missing some, some healing effect from trees, but they are coming soon. We see Labyrinth here getting an insanely lucky drop using the Pendant of Energy with the Mana Stone dropping combination to get another Impale out. Nice Impale, but doesn't hit too, too much. Of course, the Elementals here are quite damaged as well. MK throws this nice Storm Bot onto the Crypt Lord. The Crypt Lord could be in serious danger here, actually. Absolutely no defensive items to protect himself. We see the Rifles being microed back nicely against the Ghouls and Beetles. Labyrinth losing quite a lot of units here, actually. We see one Rifle being trapped in the corner. That one's going to go down for sure. But now we have two Priests on the field, another Elemental being summoned as well. Feels like Labyrinth is losing momentum. Heavily in this fight. Even Militia was on time. Perfect uh, exchange by Mr. Fortitude. He didn't lose much. He has the brilliant aura. He has the priest. He's just going to heal this army. Maybe by one heal scroll. And as we can see, Militia is coming as well to make the Arcan Sanctum, to make some towers. And the deadly push is coming. And Mr. Labyrinth, he needs a miracle. Yeah, Labyrinth not even tier two yet. There's not a Death Knight coming in with extra mana potions and another rod to help alleviate this pressure. It feels like Fortitude has this game in the bag. We see more towers being upgraded for Labyrinth right now, trying his best to repair it. We know how hard it is to kill those towers when they're being repaired by Acolytes, of course, but I think the Rubin Tower might fall here in a second. When that is gone, the control is gone for Undead, and this will be super hard for Labyrinth to fight this off. In moments like this, you need a Hail Mary play. You need to impale kill a hero or something like this. You need to force a mistake by your opponent, but we, there are pro players. It's kind of hard to make a crucial mistake. But as you can see, Mr. Labyrinth is trying, and I can't blame him. Can he do it? Fortitude still focusing down the second tower, actually forcing a ton of repair. We see lots of beetles in the front line, but it feels like they're just feeding experience at this point. We only have two priests available with the spell. It's not the most in the world. We see they have one dispel each, which is decent. But this Crypt Lord here, if he didn't get that Mana Stone, Labyrinth would have been in huge trouble. 
that's true and as you can see you need to be patient during the push you cannot just jump on your opponent and because you have this constant regeneration of hp right you don't want to you lose your please you can take this uh, fight longer if you are forcing repair because if you are forcing repair it's like one base one base scenario it's not that bad you're absolutely right, Sol. We see Fortitude making amazing use of those priests right now. Everything is basically full health, apart from the footmen, of course, which are basically cannon fodder at this point. And Labyrinth has to abandon the expansion. Mr. Labyrinth says, this is a tournament. This is my tournament, uh, not live because it's double elimination, but on the way, and he wants to try. He wants to try to go one base versus one base. In the past, one base versus one base in this meta used to favor undead, but of course, because of the mid game, early game, human is ahead. This looks rough for Labyrinth right now. This at Mountain King, of course, looking imperious in the front line. Lots of mana available to him to get some pickoffs. One thing going down, being denied once again, which Labyrinth has done amazingly, of course, but it's still units lost. Labyrinth trying to get towards tier three as well, which of course he needs in order to fight off this army. But it feels like Fortitude will just be able to establish a base outside of Labyrinth and fortify his position with towers. Yes, as we can see, like Labyrinth, uh, Fortitude is not pulling back. He knows that Labyrinth is uh, um, weak now, and this impale was like a little bit uh, defensive kind. Of. He connected with a lot of units, but wasn't able to kill anything because he lacks this damage. Fortitude right now is still continuing the assault. Of course, one rifle does go down. Labyrinth trying to get as many pickles as he, as he can, but we see the priest. Dispelling the beetles beautifully, another nice impale. Ghoul's going down as well. The fiend at the back here just moving around. It feels like Labyrinth is really running out of steam. The crypt lord is being focused right now, and Labyrinth just has to tap out. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, when a human second hero gets the same level as under first hero, you know that you are in trouble. And this MK level three versus crypt lord level three.